and today I'm going to be covering our desktop application called the Agility Explorer. This application works with all versions of Macola software, Progression, ES, and Macola 10. So this presentation is to focus on streamlining and making the uh, processing in Macola a little bit easier, trying to reduce time on transactions and give you greater visibility. He has presented a, has a presentation today where we're going to cover how Agility on the desktop works, how it integrates with Macola, and she's going to look at some of the tools that come with it. And Steve, we'll go ahead and focus on a couple of the things that you're talking about regarding projects. Probably wouldn't be the complete focus of this, but we can certainly discuss aspects related to it. Now we could actually view that data. Kathy, pick up. Yep, here. Hello, everyone, and thanks for um, joining us today. Um, as Bob said, we're going to talk about um, the Agility Explorer, and the area that we're going to focus on today is the order processing and how you can streamline your uh, order processing steps. So um, the thing that we're going to take a look at is, is what is Agility? Um, when you guys install Agility, you have um, different components. Um, we started out as a DMS company, and our main area of focus was WMS. Uh, and everyone knows us for real-time inventory management. Uh, we created that. We developed an object library, and that is what we use to develop our product. But also made that available to our customers to use those same tools, which allow them to customize their own applications and write their own uh, views, grids, forms, um, transactions. Uh, they could process Macola the way that they wanted to do that. So when you install Agility here, you get different components, and the, one of the main components is the Agility Framework, which installs the Agility Explorer. And when I look at my slide here, I have the Agility Explorer here, and this is what we're going to take a look at, is the application that runs on the desktop. Part of the Agility Suite, we also have the Agility Design Studio, and that is the tool that is used to create the Agility Explorer Explore applications. And we have our Agility Mobile, which everyone knows us for those handheld applications that are for our WMS system. And here the Agility Form Studio, which is a tool that is used to design the um, forms used for the handheld or the virtual um, So we have Agility Explorer, Agility Mobile and the Agility Design Studio and Agility Form Studio. And then coming in our next project in 566, we will have the Agility Web Explorer, which is a tool that runs grid-based applications similar to Agility Explorer just from um, the web interface. And Agility Design Studio is the tool that is used to work with and create those Agility Web Explorer applications. So as we create this and we put applications out there, a lot of our customers started using them um, and we published them out there as examples of things that you could do. But our customers were using them um, right out of the box as they were and they were getting a lot of benefits from them. So it was streamlining all their processes and it was a standard application. People though aren't aware that they have a lot of these applications in the standard of the box product. So what we're trying to do is we're working on making everybody aware of what is an Agility Explorer, which is your out of the box application that runs on the desktop, and what's in there, and what can we help you streamline and do faster and better for Macola type transactions. So today we're going to get started, and we are going to um, walk through the base functionality of Agility Explorer. So how to navigate, how do I customize it, how do I make it look like I want it to look like. 
and then we're going to walk through the different areas and how you can find your Markova data. Um, look at things in a streamlined manner for the order of status, um, how you can use the pick management and confirm ship, bill and invoice, and look at some dashboards for accounts receivable and order entry um, in a much st more streamlined way. So let's get started. Um, first thing that I'm going to do, whoops, I am going to open up my Agility Explorer in here. And on here is opening on my other screen. And I am going to open Agility Explorer. In a multi company environment, um, I basically have the companies that I have from Ecola displayed if I want to run Agility Explorer from those companies. So I'm going to select my company. Now, like Bob said, um, we don't care if you're running progression, we don't care if it's or M10. We work with all of the McCall versions, and we are agnostic to what version you're on. So whatever you develop and design or use in Wysis Agility, um, your users don't have an idea what version of McCall you're using behind the scenes. So if you do upgrade or you make changes um, to that version, nothing in Wysis changes. So the users have no idea what's really running behind the scenes. First area that we're going to take a look at is we are going to take a look at our order processing here, and we're going to look at our order status screen. Order status screen here. I'm going to make my screen a little bit bigger here, and just stretching this to my desktop. Everybody see the screen, okay? Yeah. This is Agility yeah. Explorer here, and this is an application order status. And first thing that opens here, I can see that I have a main grid, I have a details grid, and then I have a filter over here on my right. A filter that's defined over here allows me to put in some filter criteria by date, and I can choose all dates, a date range, a moving range, however I want here. And then it's asking me what status of the orders do I want to see. I'm just going, I can leave this open here for all statuses, and I can click OK. And it is going to bring up all of my Macola orders that are in the Macola system here, my open orders, order status. And you can see I'm scrolling through, and it's telling me that there's, I have a pick ticket printed or it's on credit hold for the various different statuses of my particular orders that are here. Now, you'll notice that in the design of this, I do have some alerts up top here, alerts that have been designed in the standard product, and this is right out of the box. You install it today, this is what it can pull up, and this is what it shows you and does. But I got a promise date that's late. So it's reading the promise date that's on your orders in Macola. And if it's after that promise date, it's giving us a warning that it's late. If I have any incomplete order, so if I have an eye type or an order that's kind of hung up, it would be yellow. I have any in here. But if I did, it would be highlighted and it'd make it very easy for me to see me to do something with that order. Now, in my screen here, I have my top, this is my title bar with all the different fields, and I can scroll across here and see the different fields that I have. I have my UPS shipping method, my freight pay code, my shipping information, my ship via code, all of this information is available to me. And this is main grid pulling up my order. Now, you'll also notice here that down below, if I take a look down below here, I have my... <laughs> excuse me, line item detail down below. And you'll notice here that my order that I was sitting on, 246, these items that are on the order, you can see the quantity ordered to ship requested. If it's ordered, excuse me. And, oh goodness, excuse me. Go back to the details. Um, what the values of the fields are, and information. You'll notice as I click on orders, my line items down below are changing, and I need the different line items <coughs> down here that are each of these orders. If I would like to fill the 
I'm filter here on the left here with the main filter. Put this to a filter column here. Here, if I want to pull up my orders for, say, I want all my orders just for the village bike shop, I can start typing village bike shop. And you'll notice it has now pulled up all the orders that met that criteria. And it also created that filter criteria down here. Get rid of it simply by clicking the X or backspacing there. Um, maybe I want to, I want all the orders that are bakers. And it built this criteria down here. I can choose Edit Filter, and I have some additional criteria where it came up and it said Contains. But maybe I want this to be equal to or greater than or that nature, which will give me additional filters also capability. When I'm done with that filter, I simply click the X and I take that filter off here. So it's very easy for me to search and to find my orders. Um, potentially here, maybe I want to find all of my FedEx orders. So if I had, I don't have any FedEx, but <clears throat> an air freight, so potentially I want to find those orders. Space and make those go away. I um, also have the ability to arrange my columns however I want to see them best. So right now, my ship via code is clear over here on the right side. And if I want that to be over for here, because that's how I look at my orders, I am simply clicking on the title bar here. And I'm going to drag this over to where it's on my column. And you can see I have my ship via here. I also have clicked on this, and so I'm now sorting my ship via, and I can click so it's doing ascending or descending. I also hit my filter here, and it show me all the values that I see. And if I only want the UPGs, I can check the box and we see the UPGs. So the ability to create a filter that way. If I don't wish to see, potentially maybe I don't use this request date, and I want it on my screen, all I need to do is select the column here, and I can right-click. I can tell it to read this column here, and the column is now gone. So if I don't want my shipping to on here, I can hide this and take the fields off that are on my screen. If there's something on here that I want on my screen, I also have the ability to right-click and choose column chooser, and fields that are available but not displayed on the screen or that have hidden are going to be in this box here. And simply I'm going to just drag this up. So if I have my request date, I want to drag that up. I simply click on it, hold the mouse down, and I drag it to my screen. When I'm done, I close that. <coughs> so potentially I want my customer number over here. And the next thing that I can do is I can see this layout so that it is customized to how my company or how I want to see this. So in order to save this layout the way I want to see it, I go to Layout, and I'm going to choose Save As. And this is called My Orders. And you'll notice that it created an order status uh, right down here. If I close this, You'll notice when I click my order, it now, and I select my filters, it's going to open up the way I last designed it, and I saved it. So my customer number is over here. My ship fee is over here. It's going to remember how I wanted it, and it's going to bring it back and present it to me in the best way that is good for me. Um, you'll notice up here that you have the option to export this detail into an Excel spreadsheet. So I simply can choose my export button here to export this to Excel, and I can export my main grid, which is the top grid, or I wanted to export my line items because I'm showing my line items down here. But I can also choose to export this detail to the detail to Excel, and it's going to export exactly like I see it on the screen. 
Sir is up here in my grid here is what will export to Excel. And I can easily take that out and do that. Now on my screens here, you can see I have a I'm going to sort this by order number. And you can see that I have a little spyglass here. And my button down here is order. And so I can double click on a particular order. Or I can simply click on my order button. And it will do the same thing and open up an order log. In this order dialog here, I can now see everything about this order that is in Macola. So I can see my build to information. I can see my basic information of when it was ordered, what's my ship via, my date, my terms. Um, I can see the line items down here. I can see my billing information if I need to see it from right here. If you have any comments that are tied to this particular order, I can choose the comments button and it would show me here. If there's a shipment, um, I can do a shipment here. If I want to do a pro forma invoice, I can click on my pro forma invoice and it will go out and generate, and it pops open on my other screen, so let me pull it over here. It's open a pro forma invoice that it created and now I can print this um, or I can have it set up to go to my printer. Um, it will print this and I can send that out to my customer. Um, if I have um, one in Macola is you have to print the uh, headers or the audits for the headers and the lines to get any detail and the reports are somewhat cumbersome to read. I'm in this order and I can choose my header audit and see when this was um, entered here. But if multiple things had happened, I would see line items of the different things that had happened to this order. And down here in my line detail, you can see down here I also have line detail. So if I want to select one of my items and I need to see any line audit information, I can select that line. And I can see the different things that have happened to this particular line in the order line audit trail. So it's very easy to get around to all the places in Macola from just one location. Also there on the line detail, I guess there were any inventory transactions for this item. And I can see that I have this one inventory transaction and it happens to be the allocation for this. Um, if I want to take a look at, for some reason, the item master, I can see the item master and up the Macola item information. And I can see all of my item information. So everything that's on the item its main location, its product category, material cost type, how it's stocked. Everything that is in that item master is right here, viewable on location. Say inventory location. I put in it, I pull my location dialog. I can see last inventory transactions for this particular item. And it's easy to get to from one location. I can have all that information at my fingertips. Okay, so also notice down here if this had a purchase order on it or if this was a bill of material that had a pop order, the buttons aren't lit up because it's not a um, bill of material and I don't have a PO on it. For it. But I did, this would be lit up and I could simply click on this and it would take me to the purchase order or it would take me to the captured bill of material or any pop orders or shop floor that were out there. So from one location, I can get everywhere that I need to to see any information. You'll hey, notice that... Hey, Kathy? Uh-huh. A question here. When we were talking earlier for Steve on the phone, he suggested did a lot of work with projects. And yes. I would suggest that you could have a button. You know, it doesn't come out of the box with a button, but it would be easy, somewhat easy to create called a SQL view of your product data, and you could mm -hmm. probably just have a button to project information or just expose the project field on the lines right there at mm -hmm. the order header. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Do you, is that something? Yeah, true. And when he was talking about it, I did look, um, and I went out to the column chooser just to see if we had the project or the job, depending on what version you're on. Um, and it's not in this view, but again, when you buy Agility Explorer, what we're showing you today is the standard stuff right out of the box that you can install and use right away that's here that requires no optimization, no setup, no nothing. 
but you had tools and the project fields could be very easily added so that it would be an option here. You could ha drag the project field up into your views and have the project available. And then, like, like I said, if you want to take it even further, when you on that particular order with that project, you could have a project button that would open the project and you could see everything that for however you want to see that, the transactions or the GL or whatever might be tied to that particular project. So that's, that's a very possible and doable. Can, can I ask a, a question? Is, is this mainly just a view screen or if you see something that's not right, can you actually change it from Agility or would you have to log into McCullough? To... Well, this particular screen here is just a view screen. There are different places and a couple areas where we're going to get into it where you have the ability to edit some things or add some things to an order. Um, again, we're just showing you what's out of the box, and so there aren't a lot of places to edit the orders, but we, I mean, basically, if you can think of it and it's something that you need to edit or you think you want to edit, any of these could be made editable so that your, your um, people could add a value and update that. You'll see and I minute, say that too. with caution on uh, most fields, so you have to be careful with what you're letting them edit, but you can do it, yes. Now, does this just work with McCola, or does it work with Silso? Um, it can work, you it can can work make, with both. It can work with both. And actually, at the right. end of this, Bob's going to show you some web views that work synergy really well, but this can be designed. Um, we, we use this internally against our Synergy database and pull Synergy values back. So we have Synergy and Grids, and then actually it can go against any SQL database. So you can set grids or you can set up other things if you have outside uh, databases that you could point it to and, and do the same thing. I think you said that you could be in Agility and you could access information that's maybe in the Synergy database, but let's just say I'm in a database and I'm on a project and could you use Agility to show information on a project card? Sure, you bet, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a okay. SQL database, so yes, you could. That information could be coming from McCola and it could be coming from the Synergy database, I guess. Yes, true. Okay. Yeah. And, and we, we often do that with a lot of our own information. Where we're working from both, or we're working from Synergy or and or McCola. So okay. very doable. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you is um, I'm going to show you the uh, order pick management. So this is just as it's designed by the box, an order screen and information, something to get you to see everything that's that's out there as far as the order, the item, purchase order, all from one location. So open up the pick management screen. And the pick management screen is a screen that lets you do many different things. So not only can you do filters up top here, um, and I also have the ability, so the additional functionality is I can group my orders and I can group any of these grids. If I am the person that, that this is a pick management, and you'll notice here I have filled back order. So I have the ability to fill back orders from here. I can pick my tickets here, and I can view an order. I can change the quantity here. So not only can I fill the back order, I can change the quantity here to where I'm moving them back and forth from the quantity to ship and back into back order, and vice versa. I can view the items from here. So you'll notice here that I have a lot of reds here, which is telling me if I look at my alerts up top that I have back orders. If I'm the person that wants to go in and I'm going to do my fill back orders, it may be that I want to fill back orders maybe by a, a, a user-defined field or maybe even a customer type. Um, I'm not sure. Let's see if I have customer type on here. So I'm going to right-click and choose column user here. And customer type is right here. And I'll drag this up here for my customer type. And I could stick it on my screen here. And this is my customer type. So I have have retail, I have uh, distributors here, and maybe I want to fill back orders by my customer type. So I want to group these by customer type. So I'm going to drag my customer type into this area up here that is meant to allow me 
me to group. And it can be turned on and off by going up here to the file menu and I can go to grid and I go to group by panel and I can turn a group by panel on and off. So now my group by panel is turned up here. So if I drag my customer type up here, you can see now that it's grouped these by my different customer types. And I'm going to right click and tell it to expand those. I'm also going to, I'm going to sort them descending. Um, I can see here I have my retail type. And I can see when I come down here that I have my distributors. And whatever that user defined field is or that customer type, maybe I need to make sure I fill these back orders first. And I fill the other retail type orders. I come in here and whatever orders I pick and choose, I'm going to select the orders of which ones to fill. And I can simply choose all of these or I go through and I can do one by one. And I fill these, then click fill back order. And you'll notice I can see the quantity on hand here, my locations that I have. And I can see what I have on back order. And notice it just filled these. So it took it out of back order and it filled it in the quantity to ship. Then edit field, and I can tell that because it's bold, and so our edit fields have the ability to be outlined in blue. They're always bold. And let's just say, oops, I accidentally filled this one. I only have four. I also just type in four here to make sure it's selected, but I can choose change quantity. It's going to change it from, um, I refresh it, and I'll see that I now have my 244 go. It is right here. And you'll see that I have four now in my quantity to ship, and I put two back in my back order. So the screen gives me a lot of ability here to fill my back orders the way I want to fill them as a person who is responsible for filling back orders. So we have this screen the way I like it for filling back orders. Again, I can go up to layout, and I'm going to choose as, and I'm going to call this guy fill back orders. Just now under my pick management, I have to fill back orders. But let's just say, also now the person that's going to print the pick tickets. So I'm opening up the main pick ticket management screen, and I'm not going to print pick tickets by customer type. I want to print them by the customer number. So I can drag my, my group by is still here and I can drag my customer number up here. Now I am grouping them by the customer number. I'm going to expand that. And I can see all the orders for a particular customer here. And again, I can use all of them. That's going to select everything on the screen. I can choose this as customer, and it's going to fill everything it can here. Um, and then I also, because I don't have all the quantities here, I'm just going to choose these the screen that I want it, and I am going to print my pick ticket for this particular order. I'm going to choose pick ticket, and it's popped my pick ticket up to the screen, and there's my printed pick ticket. All my lovely barcodes on here, and you can see oh, this one back ordered. So because I'm only shipping four and not all six. And I prompt, did they print correctly? I can say yes. And in here, I'm going to save this layout as my pick ticket layout. So I can make multiple functionalities out of one screen very easily. I can stream on how I print pick tickets, how I fill them, how I change and manage the quantity, and I can do that more suitable to you. Any questions on that? No. Okay, I also have, I can have footers on here. So if I come up here to my grid, I come up here and I can have footers. And I'll put some main footers on here. I can do sums. I can do counts. So I come down here to my total and I can right click and I could do a sum on what I feel might be logical. This is counting the quantity that I have in a back order. 
you want to do a, let's say, I want to do a sum on my orders by a particular customer here. I can right click here and I can do account. And so I have a count of 36 line items on their order. Whatever makes sense to my company, I can right click and I can do that. Again, once I make changes, I have to save the layout because I can take a print layout. If I don't save it, then it will go back to how it was before changed it. But this is the pick management. And you also notice I can drill down if I write this is linked. So if I click on here, it's going to open up my inventory multi dialog just like it did on the order status. Again, you can see all kinds of information for being in one location here. Another thing that we will take a look at is we are going to uh, look, we also have a pick ticket uh, reprint, which allows you to, I'm just bringing this up quick. In here, this will show me all the pick tickets that have been printed. I can reprint any of them, or I can cancel a pick ticket. So if I need to cancel a pick ticket, or I can't find it and I need to reprint it, you'll see here's my 244 order it's sitting out here waiting for me to, I could select these, reprint it, or I select these and cancel it, and it will go back to a status one, just like it would in the COLA. That's very easy to help me streamline things is I can do confirm shipping um, from the Agility desktop. I can do it from our PickPack application, which is a little more detailed, or I can do confirm shipping right from my Agility desktop grid. Again, have my filters here on the left. I can click OK. And you'll notice here that if I want to select all of them, I can select all of them at once. If it had been Lauded or serialized, it's going to ask me that, and I need to supply the bin or the lot, and I would need to put that information in there, and then I click confirm ship, and they all go. In this instance, because I have just certain data, like I'm going to choose these two here because I know they're not binned or lauded, and I can click confirm ship. They are now confirmed shipped to line items. I didn't have to open the orders, and I didn't have to go through all that process. I did it right here from the screen. If I did do my 244 here, I can select all my line items here, and then these are all binned. I happen to have on my pick ticket here, I do have the um, bin barcoded on my pick ticket. I just have a simple scanner attached to my desktop, and I need to see the bin number. I can simply just scan the pick ticket right here, and of course it will work just like it does as if I'm doing it from a handheld or out there in the desktop. So it makes it just that easy to do the same thing. And I have that information here. These guys are checked. If I want to confirm these, I simply click Confirm Ship, and off they go. So my three line items have been confirmed shipped. If I wanted to rearrange the screen, save it to something that's more meaningful, you have that ability at your fingers. So the next thing we're going to take a look at is order billing. Uh, open up order billing here, and this is something your accounting department will absolutely love. I can see that I have my three orders that are here. And they're all in a status seven. They're sitting there waiting in Macola. You would go select them one by one by one. Now up here we talked about edit fields. So these have been opened up and designed as edit fields, and I often have to maybe put the freight in or change the freight. What that is, I may need to add a miscellaneous amount. So add a miscellaneous amount. If I have comments that need to go on to the orders, I can put in my comments. What has to happen here for these particular edit fields? And we'll write back to the order entry file in Macola to the order. And I'm just going to select all of these. If I had a whole bunch of them, select them all. I click link. And I'm not going to select them all. I'm only going to select one because there's two ways to do this. One select this, and I choose billing, and to pop up a question, do I want to invoice at the same time? And since I'm going to say no, and click OK, and what I have selected is now billed, and it, or open up my order invoice, see now that particular order invoice is sitting over here, and you can see I have these grouped by orders and credit memos. But order is sitting over here now waiting to be invoiced. And simply, again, I can choose 
of my invoices here, um, or I could choose all of them at the top, and I'm going to choose Invoice. And I'm going to print my invoices. I can see over here, you sending them to a printer. I'm sending them to my screen. To um, them, it's printing the order invoices, and off they go to the printer, and I just did them all at once. And I'll have to click through the print screens here. Go to my screen. And I have just printed all my invoices. I do have a question. Uh huh. Do we process our invoices? Is every line, because we do, we have product. We ship the product, and then we perform installation services and some other things, and then we're able to invoice. And we have, you know, job numbers even to collect the cost for the installation services and and mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. how does this work as far as when you have? I guess you would still have to go in and take the processing the shop floor numbers as far as making sure they're ended and closed and. All of them. Yeah. Right. Do you guys do you guys push orders into shop floor, and then when you do the shop floors, push them back to the orders, or you complete them? We uh, we we pull from the or, you know it creates a shop floor number, put it into release it, put it into production, manufacture it. We ship it, we get it installed. Um, in permitting services and survey services and and those jobs, even though we create a shop floor number, we have to we don't end and close those until when we're invoicing. You could certainly do something that was custom to take a look at that process. Not, there's not anything again right out of the box, but it, it, it's something that could certainly be customized to help you streamline that process too. I was looking for the job field here because you can also have the job field. If if you're pushing these and having it update in Macola, it would do the same thing here in Agility. I'm not seeing the project code here, but it could be added in your screen. It could also be editable so that if you needed to change the project code, and you could do it at order building, um, or you could do it even um, at the confirmed ship level. Um, um, or here. I guess this does work with the with the sales tax, Alara sales tax. Yes. Uh huh. Yep. And have, have you found a way around? Like we can't use shipping when we ship the product because we have sources that are added afterwards. And uh, you know, installation services and if we use the confirmed ship in the system, it won't let you back in the sales order to do anything with it. You know, what, the services. Uh, I guess what kind of what kind of services are you doing? Install services. And so you those, you're adding you them the after you confirm ship? Well, we confirm ship when we're invoicing it, but we can't confirm ship when we actually ship the product. So that's another discussion. So, so can you be okay? Probably. Is. Yeah. yeah. That that'd be another good reason to have another private meeting to talk about what you need to do and mm -hmm. and possibilities. Because what this is about about general application to expose people to what agility mm -hmm. does. Just plug in, turn it on, what can you see, what can you do today? And if mm -hmm. that's what it's you want flexible. to tweak. Mm -hmm. I would like to, I mean, as we're going through our process of trying to speed thing up and cut out as many steps as we can, you know, that's kind of one of the things is, you know, how customable is you know, something like this, and, and help in what we do. So, mm -hmm. come back here to the order uh, to the to the steps we're going to go through here, and then and then I think maybe we could set up a time, and you and Bob could get a little more detailed 
into that or, you know, me, whatever we need to do here. But back at the order billing here, I wanted to show you two here. I've got two more invoices or orders that are out here. If I choose all of them and then choose billing again, you'll notice I had do I wish to invoice. And if I choose yes and I go OK, not only am I taking it to a status 8, but I'm also taking it to a status 9. And see over here, it printed my invoices again. So both of them are going to print up here. And so now it went all the way to my status 9. My invoices are printed. It is done and ready to go, and it is waiting to be posted in Macola. So that fast, I don't have to open anything up one by one. I don't have to print them. And then I also have the order invoice void, which is really nice. Here you can see they're all the ones I just did. But I have to open it up in Macola and fake print it either. I can come in here and simply select it, choose invoice and back to a status waiting to be order invoiced. So that was 244, and if I come back here to order invoice and I refresh it, um, and I can see my data here, you'll see my 244 is back over here. So I voided it just that simply, and it's back. Now, some of the other cool stuff that we have, just literally right out of the box here, if I show you the planning and forecasting here, we've got some, like we have a daily order total calendar. And this is really cool in that I can look at the different order types or the order statuses, and I can click OK here, and I can see what was booked on this day, what was picked, what was shipped, what was billed, what was invoiced, and I see all those values on each one of those days. And if I click on this, down below I get the actual orders, and I can see everything that was done for this particular day on the calendar here. Um, one of these here. I have an order history pivot here. So my order history pivot, I choose the types of orders. I can choose my date range. And here, down here, I can see here's my pivot, and I'm getting my sales by year and by customer. Potentially, maybe I want to see it by, I'm going to put month here because I don't have a ton of data since it's test data. And this month, and now I've expanded it to 2016, each month in 2016. And if I click in the order here, maybe I want to see this by salesperson and then by customer. So I have salesperson, and I can drag the salesperson down behind the bill to, and now I'm grouping them by salesperson and the customers that are under it, and I can see all of this data. So if I want to click on the salesperson, I get a graph of their sales up here for each year, each month. Month, I can see the customers if I click on the totals. So I've got a nice pivot table here where I can look at my detail. If I go into the customer service area, I've got um, an AR aging. So only I can see a nice AR aging here that I can very easily export out to Excel if somebody needs to see it. I can see it bucketed here. I can drown into it and get into a customer graph of my detail and the actual customer card where I can see all the individual invoices here. Again, I can export the lines here or out to the detail into Excel. So if somebody, a customer needs an aging, I simply pop in here. I can export it, send it off to them, and say, here's your information. Um, they are aging pivot. Um, thing. I have my information out here. I can simply click on it. I have my graph up above. Um, maybe potentially I want to, if I have classifications that I use, I can see my different classifications. Um, and I have all different ways. And that's pretty much what I have to show you today out of the box. But as you can see here, it makes a lot of things in Macola very streamlined, very quick, very easy to do. You do have the tools. Um, so in addition to what, what's out of the box, it might give you some ideas. Maybe you do want to customize it, of it, and um, we can certainly talk to you about that. So I'm going to turn it over to Bob, and he's going to show you a few more things. I do have one other quick question. Um, oh. This is really fast. Is it fast in a, a real customer live database? Um, it's it's fast. But of course, it's going to depend on your data and your database and how big your database is and your server and your network and you know what your server is sized for and of course your network can handle. So I'm on a demo database, um, but I'm on some pretty good customer database and and it is it is pretty fast. 
the pivots it's, you have to careful with. Color, it's, right. Um, I would say yes, but I'm partial. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, you know, the pivots, of course, you're putting a lot of crammed data there, so if, and it's running on, like, history. So, if, you know, 20 of history and you have gobs of orders from there, you might be careful because, you know, it could be trying to pull back way more data and all the lines. So, you know, but it is drastically fast there. And, uh, I mean, we have a lot of big customers with big data sets that seem to do quite well with it. Filter one more time. Yeah. This is right here, Steve, allows you to add other filter criteria. These are just the ones that are in the system today, but you can just put ranges and, you know, different voice types and things like that, and this is going to reduce your data set that you're querying. When you go grab the data, it pulls it into RAM. Um, you got a nice workstation with plenty of RAM. You should have a good time. The most of ours is we have applications, so most people are actually connecting remotely through like terminal mm -hmm. services or something like that. So I mind set up that, that way. Um, there are people on there that I don't know. John and Robert. John, can you tell a little bit about what you're doing with Macola? Yeah, actually, I work with Steve. Um, okay. He sent this over to me to sit in. Um, and one question I had when you mentioned about updating uh, the data in the system, and you said I'd be a little concerned. Is that just because you're directly updating the tables without really going through the McCullough front end? No. All the, the here's what you see here. The ability to use our business objects. And business objects are black boxes that are written to use the McCullough transactions. So we actually so Agile is displaying information and sometimes we allow you to do a SQL update to a specific field when there's no transaction really there. Um, so of course you have to know what you're doing. And that you might work with a consultant or somebody as your business partner to do those things. But the transactions that Kathy was doing, like billing and invoicing and and order management, those are done by scenes with high transaction objects and black boxes that know how to do everything. With millions of transactions that happen with McColl every day, over over 300 companies use this drive mid of transactions every, every day. Okay. So very high high speed, they're very robust and they're very scalable. We have customers with two you have customers with you know hundred and two users. So very powerful. What are you on? They're you guys on. running? Right. And I was saying updating, I mean if they're doing it in WISIS here um, and, and they're looking at any of this data, it, we heal whether your progression or your Macola S or Macola N10, when you update Macola, it, it doesn't matter to us. It's all going to look the same, and there isn't anything different here um, as far as your users are concerned. So if they're using Wysis and you update the back end, and there's something that's different about it, they will not, they will not know any, anything about it. Could know all of that. This is what maybe what I meant there. Yeah. Okay. So there's a guy on the phone. Robert, are you there? I am. What up to? What are you doing with McCullough? Distribution center, and uh, we do all of our invoicing transaction, pick tickets, uh, perform invoices, all through McCullough. Okay. And is the third party warehouse that Alan is using, or someone else? No, completely separate. I'm um, relevant okay. solutions. Okay, I see. Okay, good. Um, Ray, you pass the screen to me this time? Absolutely. One second. If I can figure out how to use this. I show you um, a couple ways that a distribution center might want to use this with Macola. 
um, I can figure out what do I need to, to share my screen. Just click on share my screen. That. There you go. That'll. There we go. Okay. Do you recognize this as Macola 10? Mm -hmm. yeah. Use the workspaces or yeah. not? Uh, this uh, currently not using them, but we're hoping to get there. Okay. Well, let's big picture for a moment. Um, McColl has these things called workspaces. Uh, built a workspace for the warehouse. When you use a workspace, you're basically linking in technology, and you know, basically able to call different things from these options here. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yes. go through the, the process here. You load and up workspace. And you come in here, do modules. Then you get a workspace here. And then you can get a transaction. So this is the path show you were our desktop client server applications. And plug in WISIS web components right here. So if I click on this option, it'll bring up a new component. In this case, I have a, a purchaser receipt grid. So it looks a little different, doesn't it? It had much more data on her screen, but very focused application where I can just click here and note you were asking about updating Macola data. I can come in here and can do a, a transaction. Here's a transaction I want to do for this purchase order right here. I want to receive five. I just push that and uh, check this box here and say receive. Go out and do that receiving transaction in the Macola system real time. So whether you're on McCola office or whether you're at a distribution center somewhere else, you got the relevant solutions. If you're supporting a McCola customer at your 3PL, you're able to do transactions through a grid to confirm what you've done for somebody through your 3PL. They could communicate to you the orders they want you to fulfill, and then you could send back the data the number, the pro number, uh, information they may need to complete their business cycle. So the idea here is that from this McCola menu, you can run your and then plug in the things you need at your workspace. And so when I get to my workspace, you know, I can click here and go like that, and then I can plug in these different components. Now, for you that don't have the McCola space, you can also just, if I'll just go ahead and open up my browser and this Agility browser. And now, now I have just from my browser, and just like Kathy did, she had left, on the left, she had folders, and then there are components that are in folders. So if I want to look at PO receiving on the web, this will be the same thing that I just saw in the McCola thing, but without all the McCola and 10 stuff. The WISIS applications from within McCola 10, the, I'm actually using a McCola 10 license, and I'm using a WISIS license. If I get just from my browser like this, I'm just using a WISIS license, Macola is just fine by itself. So you could have 10 users in Macola and 5 users in WISIS, or what mix you want. That, that's what the browser application looks like. That PO receiving transaction from the workspace? Yeah. Do you have to have a G in order to do it from a workspace? Well, if I'm using this application right here, on an item that I want to receive. 
So this is all part of our agility application. So the tool set that is built on works on the web and it works on the desktop. And you just get the license that you need to run it where you want. You have a web license or a top license, that sort of thing. And, and you did call with agility. One, one person at a time. Go ahead. Well, I was just asking that the uh, the agility will actually work with Synergy workspaces. You can incorporate it in with workspaces that you may be building. Yeah. Someone. Right. I want to uh, can bring up McCola 10. Is this a question? So here's a so basically right here. Here's a component. This is a G as a went. See that? that? So this is what they call a widget, and you use widgets or use workspaces. The way you and your business partner want to lay it out. So here's workspace. And here's a Donna workspace to do that. Dips for different folks. And you can edit just browser. See that's just a browser in my my in my Google. I can just bring it up. So the ways to do it, that's kind of the world of the web, right? You just figure out what works best for you. Notice that this is a browser. So run on an iPad, run on your smartphone, or wherever you want to run. We're at the uh, 2 o'clock. Okay. Good. So was there um to let people know that uh, we were at the 2 o'clock, and if they need to drop off, they can. We are recording the um, webinar, so if you need to watch it later, you can. But uh, I have some more things that you wanted to share. So. I think I can wrap up right here, Rachel. I think this is a good spot. Okay. We covered, we've covered how to automate your McCall transactions, whether you're on a desktop or whether you're on the web or a phone or any kind of a component you want to work on. Wonderful. So, and if people want to learn more or have further questions, uh, we'll be happy to answer, uh, as well as for pricing information. Everybody? Anybody okay. have a question? All right. Thank you, everyone. Bob, Bob, thank you, Bob. Oh, I can do that. Give me one second. If you're still tall, as a a, a pro, thanks. And it's over here. Here we go. Uh, something we have going on right now. So you, you, if you're interested and so motivated, we have a special that you could take advantage mostly here, which is get the quality product that Kathy was showing you today, and you can buy your first five seats and it's $2,500. Buddy, that's, that's the... Appreciate, All right, thanks. Appreciate your attendance. Thank you. Bye. All right, thank you. Thank you, Bob. Bye. Bye.